2016 Renault Grand Scenic 1.6 DCI 130 Dynamic SNAV Review From 19,590 pounds 6. Point. Renault's new Grand Scenic rivals the Citroën Grand C4 Picasso for style but can't quite match it for substance. What is it? With its unique blend of Gallic flair, impressive versatility, and hatchback rivaling dynamics, the Renault Scenic came to define the compact MPV sector when it was first released back in 1996. Now, two decades on, Renault hopes to recapture some of that initial success with its all-new seven-seater, but that won't be an easy task considering the current state of the MPV market. A lot can change in 20 years, and the sector Renault once dominated has been driven almost into the ground by competitive BCP deals and the fact that consumers have become increasingly image conscious. Why have a middling MPV when you could have a much more fashionable SUV instead? So why, you might ask, is Renault targeting a dwindling market? Well, according to the French manufacturer, this new Grand Scenic isn't an attempt to revive a diminishing sector but rather an effort to grab a bigger market share. In short, they're going after the Volkswagen Touran and Citroën Grand Picasso. First impressions are positive. By borrowing design cues from the handsome 2011 R-Space concept, the new Scenic, with its high waistline, sloping roof, and distinctive lighting signatures, looks like a more cohesive package than the decidedly fussy Picasso. And combined with 40 mm more ground clearance, a 20 mm wider body and a 32 mm longer wheelbase, it also promises more usable interior space than the car it replaces. However, the most dominating feature of the new Scenic is undoubtedly the standard fit 2.0 IN wheels. Yes, standard fit. Renault claims that despite the larger wheels, the specially designed rubber, with high-profile sidewalls, results in a ride comparable to that of the old Scenic, which ran on smaller 17IN wheels. Cleverly, the low-rolling resistance tires also counteract any impact the larger diameter wheels have on the CO2 figures. What's it like? We recently tested Renault's 1.5-liter diesel engine in the five-seat Scenic and found it to be a rather weak unit that lacked low-down grunt. Thankfully, there are no such problems with the more powerful 128bhp 1.6-liter diesel. With maximum torque achieved at 1750 rpm, the motor pulls strongly from low revs and, unlike the 1.5, keeps performing well until it reaches its peak power at 4000 rpm. That said, we suspect that if the car is fully loaded, the 6-speed manual gearbox will still need to be worked hard, a 6-speed automatic is optional, but that shouldn't be a hardship because the clutch is light and the shift itself is relatively slick. The same can't be said for the ride, however. Despite Renault's claims about specially designed sidewalls and cleverly tweaked suspension, there is simply no way to hide the impact of those whopping 2.0IN wheels. At low speeds the car feels fidgety and unsettled, there's significant bump-thump from potholes and ruts and at high speeds the road noise can become genuinely grating. Ultimately, if you value comfort and refinement, the Grand Picasso is a better resolved machine. Not all is lost, however. The boffins at Renault know how to tune a good chassis, and the Scenic has benefited from this expertise. The steering is light and precise, the front end turns in keenly and resists understeer and although the damper settings allow body float over crests, there's never a point where the chassis feels unstable or loose. Providing you don't make the kids sick, the Grand Scenic can be genuinely good fun to hustle down a B-road. Seven-seaters often have limited space in the third row and the Grand Scenic is no exception. The middle row of seats moves forward in one swift movement, making access relatively easy, but once back there you'll find that leg and head space is at an absolute premium. Unless you have very young children, the rear seats are only suitable for the shortest of journeys. A VW Touron this is not. The Grand Scenic does offer more in the way of cubby holes, however. There are four in the floor, a massive sliding center console on the top three trims and a filing cabinet style glove box, 
plus handy picnic tables on the back of the front seats for most models. It also comes with two USB ports and a central storage bin in the rear, making it ideal for families on the go. Up front, the Scenic's interior is equally impressive, feeling just as upmarket as that of its main competitor. The infotainment setup, with its 8.7-in portrait touchscreen display, is a delight to use compared with the previous generation system and, despite being tricky to operate on the move, shortcut buttons that are physical rather than touch-sensitive make simple operations, such as changing the interior temperature, a relative dawdle. Should I buy one? Objectively, the Grand Scenic ticks most boxes for the majority of family car buyers. It's relatively spacious, engaging to drive and cheap to run. And with the addition of driver assist systems such as traffic sign recognition, lane departure assist and driver condition monitoring, it's safe, too. That said, despite rivaling the Grand Picasso for style, it's nowhere near as comfortable nor as refined, which isn't ideal for a car designed to excel on long family trips. It also doesn't have the same third row space as the VW Touron and can't hope to compete with premium subs for badge appeal. The Scenic may well have redefined the compact MPV sector back in 1996, but we doubt it'll have the same impact today. Renault Grand Scenic Dynamic SNAV DCI 130 Wear, Middlesex On sale, now Price, £28,445 Engine, 4 sills, 1,600 cubic centimeters, diesel Power, 128 bhp at 4,000 rpm. Torque, 236 pounds foot at 1,750 rpm. Gearbox, 6 SPD manual. Curb weight, 1,601 kilograms. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 11.4 SEC. Top speed, 118 miles per hour. Fuel economy, 61.4 mpg combined co2 rating slash big 119 g slash km 23 percent rivals citroen c4 grand picasso volkswagen turan